joining the um, breakout session. Um, my name is Monica Copeland. I'm a senior program manager at Inclusive. Uh, I will be your moderator for today's session. Um, as you were seeing, as you uh, entered the, the session, there were a few commercials and videos that had been taped <clears throat> by some of our sponsors. So uh, that's what that was. But um, just to explain, we uh, this session is the Reflecting on Challenges and Opportunities while serving Black Communities breakout session. Um, before we get started, I'm just gonna cover a few housekeeping pieces. One is that the um, session will be recorded and made available uh, on the conference website as well as Inclusive's website within about two weeks. Um, in order to maintain the integrity of the, the video and the recording, we will be asking you to mute if you're not speaking. Um, so just to you know, keep your <laughs> your uh, audio on mute. We also encourage you when possible to use the grid view. Um, I will I will share a couple of slides, but they'll only be up briefly um, just for the agenda. But then otherwise you're welcome to uh, do the grid view layout so you can see uh, the speaker spaces. Um, and then you can also uh, have an opportunity. This is a breakout session, so there will be an opportunity to have small group discussions. So we will be sorting you guys um, at about the halfway period of this session. Time permitting, we'll also take a few questions, but you can also um, discuss amongst yourselves during the breakout. We also encourage you to use social media. Um, the hashtag for this conference is hashtag CDCUCon for conference and 2020. So hashtag CDCUCon2020. And lastly, if you experience any technical difficulties uh, during the session, please do a private chat to AdvanceNet. Um, they are the uh, conference um, support, and so they will be happy to help assist you get reconnected to the session or log back out and use your link to log back in. So we're really excited to um, have you join us. Uh, we have about 90 attendees uh, for the session, so that's really great. The numbers may continue to go up um, throughout um, I'll start again by sharing my um, well, advanced net. I just wanted to, um, I do have a, I want to be able to share my screen. Well, do you want me to share the slides? Do you want me to share the slides? Uh, yes, if you could. All right, so again, just in case anybody's in the wrong session, this is the one on uh, breakout session on reflecting on challenges and opportunities while serving Black communities. Next slide, please. Okay, so here's the agenda. We're just, um, you know, I'm doing the welcome. I'll do a really brief overview um, about our Black Communities Initiative and our Resilience Fund. Uh, we want to get to the heart of it, which is having a conversation with um, wonderful panelists that we have lined up for you today. Um, we have Sheila Montgomery. She's the president and CEO of Florida a and University Federal Credit Union um, down in Tallahassee, Florida. We have Erla Gomes. She's the CEO of Episcopal Community Federal Credit Union uh, in Los Angeles. We have Harry Franklin, who's the manager of Concord Federal Credit Union in Brooklyn, New York, and Jacqueline Moore. Uh, who's the CEO of Faith Community United Credit Union in Cleveland, Ohio. So thank you so much for them for joining. And then I just wanted to alert everybody that uh, because it's a breakout session, typically during the inclusive in-person conference, there would have been time to meet people. And so we wanted to create the space to do that. We're really excited about trying this out as part of our virtual conference, but you guys will be placed in small breakout rooms and we'll have an opportunity to talk after the panelists speak and then we'll reconvene briefly before the next session. So thank you. Um, I, I won't need the slides going forward, but thank you so much. All right, so just as far as the um, overview um, goes, I wanted to let you know that um, we now have a new initiative at Inclusive called Inclusive Black Communities, um, but the prior name was uh, the African American Credit Union Initiative, where Inclusive has been working for the past several years in communities um, in a very kind of deep, intentional, targeted way in communities such as Chicago, and we have some of our Chicago participants on the line, as well as New York City. Um, some of our uh, New York City credit unions are also listening in. 
Um, but providing technical assistance and supports and just, you know, being there as a resource uh, to help sustain uh, that the minority um, credit unions, particularly black credit unions and credit unions serving um, African Americans. Uh, we also, um, this as, a, um, as part of the, you know, uh, one, one piece is that we wanted to gather you all together because of the current climate um, in terms of the pandemic and how that has been disproportionately affecting people of color um, in black and brown communities. And so with those dual crises of both the economic shocks of um, you know, job losses, as well as facing health crises with the pandemic, um, our, some of our African-American credit unions um, have been facing uh, unique challenges. And so that's why we brought the panelists together. And we wanna hear firsthand some of what they've been experiencing and how they're you know, pushing through. And maybe it'll give you some ideas as well as, um, again, you'll have an opportunity to share with each other. And so uh, we formed the Resilience Fund, which is an, our intention is to have a million dollars of grants deployed to credit unions who are specifically um, $100 million in assets or less for minority designated credit unions. And so um, with that, I am gonna um, let each panelist introduce themselves to just give you a, a sense of who they serve and what community they're in. Um, I'll, I'll start with, um, if our speakers can unmute themselves, I'll start with Ms. Sheila Montgomery, if you wanna tell us a little bit about your credit union. <clears throat> Good Double. morning and thank you so much for- Oh, allowing... Sheila, do you, can you turn the volume up a little bit? If you have that ability, or just talk loud. <laughs> I'll just talk loud. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Is that better? Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this great panel. It's truly a privilege, and uh, I hope I can bring in some information that uh, will help to further our cause in the African American communities. I am a 40 I plus year veteran in the credit union profession. And if anyone who knows me knows that I love small credit unions, this is what I do. This is what I, 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 I see as the great American staple. And um, I've been a member of Inclusive for over 20, 30 years. And also have, this is my third MDI credit union that I am a CEO of. So thank you again for allowing me to be a part of this great panel. Thank you, Sheila. Um, Erla, would you unmute and share a little bit about your credit union and your role? Certainly. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice seeing everyone. And um, to be honest with you, I prefer being in Puerto Rico right now. Mm. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? <laughs> Erla, I think you froze. While Earl is getting reconnected, I can turn to Harry. Harry, do you want to um, unmute? Just, oh, sorry, she's back. <laughs> as, a, as the CEO, I have been with them for about 25 years since we first started. So I know all the, everything that happens. I can wake up in the middle of the night and they ask me a question. I'd say, well, this is what's happening or that's what's happening. I do enjoy the industry. I've been a member of Inclusive since the Federation days on the board of directors. And um, I truly enjoy working with the underserved, exactly what we're supposed to do in our small credit unions. Thank you. Thank you, Erla. Harry Franklin, would you like to introduce yourself to the, the group? And you have to unmute, Harry. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be on this panel as well. Uh, I'm the uh, CEO at Concord Federal Credit Union, which is located in Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we are a faith-based credit union, but we serve uh, members of the surrounding community. Uh, I've been with the credit union for, uh, since 1993. Our credit union is a member of Inclusive. We were part of Inclusive during the Federation days. Uh, we've only been members for about four or five years, but they've been four or five action-packed years uh, thanks to Inclusive. Uh, we've made a lot of friendships as uh, we've uh, worked with Inclusive. 
including Sheila Montgomery, who served us on several occasions in our strategic planning work. Uh, so I'm happy to be here to talk about uh, some of our uh, successes. Thank you, Harry. Um, lastly, we have Ms. Jacqueline Moore. Jackie, if you want to unmute and share a little bit about, introduce yourself and your credit union. Hi, hello, I'm Jacqueline Moore. I am the CEO of Faith Community United Credit Union in Cleveland. We're one of the largest minority owned credit unions in the state of Ohio. And I think we're all gonna hear a lot of the same things through the conference, hats off to inclusive, uh, the Fed, I always say the National Federation like Sheila, help faith move along from our church basement. We too, like Harry, are a faith-based credit union. That's where we started and now we're into the community. Uh, 35 years here, 35 years with the same organization and I have seen a lot. I've had great mentors and just to learn over that period of time what this movement is really about has been a pleasure working with faith and our employees that are part of Inclusive as well. Uh, one of your past board members was our CEO, Ms. Rita Haynes. Just years and years of uh, being in the movement. It, in today's time, as we go into our session, we've seen so many things change, but our mission has not. I'm glad to be a part of people helping people. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so let's get into the heart of the, the conversation. I'm going to first field a question to Ms. Sheila Montgomery. Hi, Sheila. Um, the question I have for you um, is just to sort of set the ground of like why we would have a breakout session on this topic. So what have been some challenges or difficulties working with local Black communities since the start of the pandemic? Um, you know, feel free to share your perspective as well as how you met those challenges. So it has been very interesting as to the impact that the COVID-19 has had on Black communities. Unfortunately, uh, oftentimes African Americans are the first to be laid off or furloughed when it comes to any type of catastrophic uh, incidences. And so what happens with that is now you're falling back into the trap of some anchoring biases about the black community. You're falling into this confirmation trap that, oh yeah, they don't pay their bills. Not understanding that there are income disparities, not understanding that where you have a household of two, even comparing that with my white brothers and sisters, that household is making 25,000 well, twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars less than my my other sisters and brothers, and so now as a credit union, we've got to figure out how do we help them and stay within our regulatory compliances uh, during a time where they need it the most. And this is something that MDI, MDIs have tackled with for years, and I'm proud to say that Florida A and M. University Federal Credit Union, it's 85 years old. And they've been tackling this problem for quite a while. We wanted to make sure that as a MDI, that we know how to help our members. We're in that community. We know those people personally because <coughs> they've been there for so long. Uh, just a little quick, History, we are the fourth oldest credit union in the nation. So you can imagine that we've gone through all kind of iterations, good times and bad times. We're also the second largest HBCU credit union, which means that we have to, we have a membership that is students, teachers, and their families. So when something like COVID hit and they cancel schools, which means now your childcare centers are being impacted, which means most of your gig jobs that students have are being impacted. Our board of directors had to set, I mean, had to set the tone for how we're going to assist our members. And I'll be very brief and come back to some other um, 
solutions, but those were some of the challenges that we had, understanding who we are, where we were, and who was most impacted by this uh, dilemma. Do you want to share a few of the um, solutions that you you have come across that helped your credit union? Sure. Um, we we made sure <laughs> that we uh, complied with NCUA uh, credit union letters, and we did deferments. Our deferments was not across the board. We literally picked up the phone, called our members, and said, "Hey, what's going on? How were you affected? Do you need a deferment?" Why you know, will this help you? What do you think your uh, opportunities will be in the future? Uh, we had members that actually had COVID. We've had members that family members lost their jobs. We had members that, you know, they were gig workers, promoters and all of that, and food truck drivers. And they could not uh, sustain when this hit because it hit so rapidly. So where we were able to do deferments up to three months, and if they still did not have jobs, then we also did interest only, only payments to help them to weather this storm. Now, what we found over this last three or four months, I guess it's been six months now, almost, that people are flexible. You find a way to get back to work. You, you find a way to um, try to you know, get the family dynamics back in order. So there has been some flexibility with our membership and how they're doing, um, handling their financial affairs. And we have been very flexible being there, listening to them and helping them to really kind of reconfigure their bill. So for instance, uh, we had a couple that came in and they've been a loyal couple with a uh, member with us for a long, 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 long time. And they had a house. No, the house was only, the balance was only like $45,000. I mean, that's a car note now. But they had this loan for quite a while. So we restructured their uh, mortgage loan in order to make it easier for them to pay because one of them had lost their job and the possibility of getting that job back was nil. So just being able to talk to our members one-on-one, -on -one, knowing they can call us, knowing that they can email us, uh, even text. Uh, Any time of day, my, my office made a commitment that we will stay open. We would close our doors, but we would, our lines will stay open up to seven o'clock at night. Because sometimes people just have so much going on during the daytime that they don't get a chance to call during those regular hours. So that's some of the things that we've done at FAMU Federal Credit Union. Thank you so much, Sheila. The next question I have is for Erla. <clears throat> so Erla, what if um, your credit union members needed um, in terms of financial service relief or non-financial services? And how have you been able to address them <laughs> in your community on the West Coast, just to give um, our, our listeners some additional perspective? Well, as um, the previous speaker said, there have been it, it, it's, it's, it's a sad situation because our membership, we have seen that they have gone through a lot. I mean, debts, um, one, one of our members came in on Thursday and by Monday, we couldn't believe that she had passed. So we, are, we saw a lot of that, a mother and grandmother dying at the same time. But what we did um, when, when the pandemic first started, First begin, we did not close our doors. We kept our credit union open. We just decided to sanitize. Everyone have their gloves on, their, um, their masks. And we requested that our members come in one at a time with their masks on. I'm sure most of you did that. We, we, we cut back our hours just for the employee's sake for two hours a day. So we opened from 10 to two. And everyone that came into the building had to sign in. They signed in the time that they came in so that we can do any type of contact tracing in case of a problem. In the meanwhile, um, our members, this, a lot of them, as the previous speaker said, had lost their jobs. And after the um, unemployment, 
they receive their unemployment benefits for a certain while, we did not see a lot of movement then in terms of people needing loans or anything like that. But after, now that they're in the second phase, we are seeing more and more of that. So some of the things that we did, we, um, we, had, we, had, we have a small loan for them that is like half the interest that's being charged. We um, were able to tap into the NCUA grant for $10,000 where we can help the members with their loan payments, their um, um, any kind of prescriptions. We paid a lot of water bills, gas bills, and some of the necessary things that they will need. And we also purchased about $1,000 in um, food um, cards so that we were able to get it to them. Now we're seeing that our loans um, they are unable to pay their loans because of the fact that they have no jobs. So part of the money that we received from NCUA, we were able to assign that to help those members to pay for their, um, to pay for their loans. Um, we have kept in touch with our members. We are, especially the elderly ones, we are calling them to see how they're doing the ones that we know that live alone, and the board is already also involved in that. We only have about 1,500 members, so you, we can extract the older members on our files. So those are the ones that all of us are keeping in touch with. Um, it has been very stressful um, for the staff, and you can imagine for our community, and we are there trying to help them as much as we could. We have not... Um, seen a lot of, um, they, they haven't been asking for a lot of help, but <laughs> when we call them, then they become aware that the credit union is there ready to help them. We also sent out a newsletter to them stating what we have done. Um, in terms of, even though that's happened, Erla um, froze briefly. If she's able to get back on, we'll, we'll reconnect with her. But for now, I think I'm going to turn over to Harry. Harry, are you ready? So, Erla, you froze for a second. So, oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, we're taking, I'm having a problem with my computer, it's being a little unstable. So we're taking this time now to, to um, also add new services, Apple Pay, Apple Connect, and all of those different services that we know our younger members can use. In the meanwhile, we're looking for all the opportunities that we can get to um, help us proceed and to add services. Our biggest um, problem, the challenges that we have naturally is always capital always capital. Because when we when the members received that $1,200 and that came into the, to the credit union, they hardly use that money and it's still sitting there, which increased the assets of the credit union. So our capital naturally got eroded a little bit. We still adequately capitalized, but hopefully our credit union automatically moved from a $6 million credit union to $6.5 million credit union. So you see how that can impact us. But all in all, um, I think... Okay. Thank you, Erla. Um... I know that you're having a little bit of unstable internet. I'm, I am going to turn to Harry, um, but if you know if we have time at the end, we'll circle back. But thank you for all you're doing. And, and you mentioned the capital uh, concerns, and I just wanted to flag that I, I know that you've been in touch with our capital team. But to anybody else who's having similar um, issues, we have a inclusive capital unit, and so they can have conversations about how to help you on that front, whether it's secondary capital or any other additional services. But Harry, I'm going to ask you the question about. Those have been some of the tough challenges that the credit unions have been facing, and, and many of you have been facing similar issues. Um, but what have been some of the opportunities presented to you that have been um, a benefit to your credit union? Have you been forced to make any changes since the pandemic started that have had a positive effect on your credit union? 
Uh, yes. Uh, as I, I said earlier, we are a faith-based credit union, and we're small. We have 900 members, uh, a little bit more than 900 members, and a uh, an asset level at now at $10 million. Uh, we've been in business for many years. We, we know our members very well. We do have a large population of, of, of uh, senior members who've been with the credit union for many years. And uh, that $10 million, um, their money is largely reflected in that $10 million. They, we have members who go back uh, 30 or 40 years and, um, and they love the credit union because of its convenience, uh, because of the, the service they get from us, uh, the welcoming uh, relationships they have with us. Um, so we are very much in touch with them. We do realize that uh, many of our members um, were hit by this awful pandemic and some, uh, some of them have lost jobs, uh, there have been illnesses, not just among our senior members, but our other members as well. Uh, we also have a growing number of younger members uh, who are coming to the credit union. Uh, like Earl, we've had to cut back on our hours uh, open to our members uh, and the staffing. Uh, but we, uh, we are seeing that uh, it's been pretty steady during this time. There's, uh, there's not been a lot of uh, uh, act, uh, um, activity, uh, uh, particularly withdrawals. Uh, we haven't seen that. We haven't seen any major changes in our um, delinquency rate. Uh, in fact, during this time, we have seen an increase in our loans that we have worked so hard for. One of the things that uh, we are concerned about is that the credit union's asset size is huge in comparison to its loan portfolio. Uh, a $10 million asset size and a $600,000 loan portfolio, not good. Um, but within this last four months, we are uh, grateful that we've increased our loan portfolio by more than $400,000. And so we feel that we've got a trend going and um, we, we, we're hoping to keep that uh, trend going. Um, the difficulty is the, the, the curtailed hours. Uh, and uh, so we reach out to our members, uh, particularly the ones that we know, uh, as was said earlier, who are elderly, or, or live alone, or who are having trouble getting to the credit union and so on. And, and we do what, I, what we can to uh, serve them. I think it's important to point out uh, that uh, we, as I said, are a faith-based credit union, and uh, we've been in business for 69 years, not as long as Jackie uh, or Sheila, <laughs> but it's 69 years, and it's been challenging years, but we've always found a way to get through those challenges. And during this pandemic time, um, with the same spirit of determination and resilience, we have worked very hard to continue to keep our level of service products and services, the quality of them up. And actually during this time, we, we've rolled out a couple of new products, which um, we're so happy about. Uh, our prepaid card uh, was rolled out a couple of months ago for our members, as well as for members of the community. Um, we just rolled out our new uh, electronic transactions program through ACH and our members are thrilled because now they don't even have to come to the credit union. They can do their business uh, online. We've had the uh, online banking as well. So now our members can make their uh, transactions between the credit union and other financial institutions uh, without coming out. Millennials, as you might know, like that very much. Um, we, during this time of challenges, 
those opportunities we're very proud of. We also are happy that we've uh, applied for and received a CDFI grant, technical assistance grant during this period of time, which is going to help us a great deal in improving our um, service delivery, our staffing and service delivery uh, as we hopefully move out of this uh, pandemic. And of course, the help from Inclusive has been just really uh, critical. Uh, Inclusive has been very key, uh, not only in the grant that we received from them, but in the ongoing uh, consultancy and, and problem solving, uh, knowing that we have such a great resource group. And we are even more fortunate than uh, you because all we have to do is go across the Brooklyn Bridge and we can get to them. We know where they are, they know where we are, and uh, we have a great relationship with the staff there. So we're very, we're very happy with what they have done to, to assist us. Thank you so much, Harry. Um, we have uh, one more panelist, Jackie Moore. Um, Jackie, if you wanna get ready for this by unmuting. Um, the question for Jackie is, what do you feel your credit union needs moving forward to serve the members of the black community better in the coming months? Um, have there, has there been any increased interest in your um, NDI or black credit union since uh, in recent months? And what do you think it means just in general for the field? But primarily, what do you think you need going forward? And then we'll uh, head into breakouts. Okay, hi. Uh, first, I wanted to start off by saying like most of us, I have not heard this much about DEI in my life. And I hate that it took a pandemic to bring this out and other issues to the surface. Our community has struggled with unemployment, systemic racism and other issues for many years. So this just added, it put a long awaited light on what our community needed so long ago. So DEI really wasn't new for us. Faith will continue to do what we have always done for many years through this pandemic. We will help our members get through. Like all of you all have said, this is what we do as credit unions, people helping people. We are going to first start by healing our community. Our community, we know we need collaborations, more partnerships, we need higher grant dollars. Some of the most communities that need the most receive the, the least, but that's okay. We're thankful that we receive what we receive and we move on and do what we can uh, with it. Uh, faith, we have to heal. Our community must heal. We want to partner with mental health agencies and grief counselors during this pandemic. We've had so many members come in that have lost jobs. If you cannot work, you cannot want, you cannot survive. They don't know where to go. They don't know where to begin. We've had members come in and just sit down at the desk and cry. And I don't wanna make it bad. I was on one conference and someone said, oh, it's so depressing, it's reality. It's not depressing, it's reality, it's what we're facing. And we can get through it when you can admit there's a problem. We can then try and solve what's going on. And we, we know that we have members that work in the medical field and they volunteer to come in. Now that we're social distancing, we can't do as much, but we would always have community days and partner where you can come to the credit union, talk with someone. We, you know, if you just want to talk, I would like to see the credit unions have like a, a inspirational line being faith-based as Harry. We can shoot out inspirational emails to our members, leave members uh, messages. We know, as Sheila said, members or Yurla that have COVID. We've had employees with, with COVID scares and they had to social distance. We too never closed our doors and we're so grateful that so far no one was infected or anything. Our members are coming in one by one, two, three at a time. But 
in order to just even breathe through this. They need help first, physically, mentally. We've had members scared to test because if it comes back positive, I can't work. I can't afford to quarantine two weeks. My kids aren't in school. We have an employee that now the kids have to be at home. We are helping that way with a kitty corner where you can bring your child with you. And uh, we have retired teachers that will help kids, you know, like sit there like the parent in place of the parent while the parent has to work. It truly takes a community. We, uh, Faith is one of several smaller credit unions in Ohio. I don't want to leave any out, but I know we work with and collaborate with Greater Cleveland, uh, with Sue, with um, Nuevo. We're small and we're people of color, uh, Steel Valley, and we try and get together because you wouldn't believe it. Most of us have the same members. They'll join one credit union and go to the next and the next. And when we're looking at our list, hey, he's on our list. All those things, we understand it, but it's hard to move on and even believe there's something else out there if all you see is struggle. So when you get your mind together that you deserve more, you can have more healing begins. So we need to start there. We have to have education. As we were doing the PPP loans, we ran across a lot of small businesses that we thought were striving, didn't even have the correct paperwork to apply for a PPP loan. So they lost out on this piece that could have helped. They didn't qualify. They didn't have time to get it together. Our SBA lender and our VP of lending, we did loans through the night around the clock, we were on line together at midnight. You enter, you process, I do. I mean, we hustle. A lot of small businesses didn't get through, but faith, every loan that came to us, we were able to process because most people think big. They were running to the banks and the portal shut off. We had the first round, 30 businesses, word of mouth, came to faith, all 30 went through instantly. We took that risk and said, hey, let's do it. Let's try and help the businesses stay open. We work together and partner with each other by supporting the businesses that have the restaurants here. We bought lunch for the staff. They donated to other areas throughout the city, frontline workers, the grant funds we received. And we're thankful to Harry for what we received. We were able to help members with deferred payments. We were able to get computers. When this first started in our community, some of the kids didn't have computers nor internet access. Faith jumped in immediately because remember, we were already helping them with those issues with computer loans and Wi-Fi. Can we have a credit union day where the kids can come in and do their homework and use our Wi-Fi, things like that. Then other agencies start stepping up, giving computers and hotspots and different things. We were doing that. All those things we continue to try and do, but the businesses in order to survive, we need people to reach out that have the expertise and go back to the old credit union days of people really helping people. Volunteer. If you have any time online, our young people set a webcast. I have never gotten so much training in Zoom in my life. <laughs> just got it this morning. Monica, thank you. I couldn't even get on. And you all just stepped up and Andrea. Andrea had half of our board and staff on the phone trying to get logged in. Little things make a big difference. Some people, when you get to the little thing, if you get can't get past that, you just stop. What can we do together? You know, because we're all going through the same thing, but that's the one thing with the businesses. Some of the businesses fail, and we're sorry about that, but those that strive, even like I said, healthy living, we have a business that has a healthy shop, and he um, brought out wraps and spinach, right? Healthy eating and introduced to a community that never had those options. 
so they're eating better. Just little things that will make a difference. And when you sow into people and they see you care, they begin to care more. But now we need money. We need larger grant amount. We need money, you know, to continue these things. We need larger grants. And uh, one uh, credit union I was, I was talking with, and he was saying the money that they received. And I said, um, you know, hey, you have almost a million dollars. He said, yeah, can you tell me what can we do? Uh, what can we do to help the community? And I said, I said, you know what? If you don't know what to do with that, give faith some money. <laughs> give us part of your dollars. Because we're all in the same community. We may be a mile apart. And I know their credit union is hundreds of million of dollars. You know, and we're not, we're 15 million, like you all said, 18, this increase, but uh, help that way. We're one community, help yeah, us. Jackie, thank you so much. I think oh, you're, 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 so, you're so excited. I love that. And I love, I love all the passionate um, stories and, and information you guys have been sharing about your local communities. I do want to take us into breakouts because you guys will be assorted into breakouts too. And so you're welcome to continue sharing. But what I wanted to explain is gonna happen. So we have about 15 minutes where we can do small group breakouts in groups of five. Advanced Net is gonna help us sort quickly. Um, it'll be random assignment. But the way that it's gonna work is you're gonna be put in a group. Just take a moment to introduce yourself, say where you're from and what credit union you might be part of, uh, what organization, and then share about some of the opportunities and challenges, and especially pick each other's brains about best practices. I know a couple questions came in um, that we may not be able to field from our speakers, but we might be able to talk about in the small group breakouts. And one question was, how do you administer grants that you may receive, like from the NCUA or from Inclusive, about loan relief and things like that? How do you get that money, and how do you decide who gets the money from your credit union? Another question is, uh, how do you help your members who don't have access te to technology? And I know that Jackie, you mentioned some great things like Wi-Fi loans and computer loans, but even just accessing their account and things like that. So love to have you guys talk in small groups for about 15 minutes. We're gonna break now, and then we're gonna come back at 12.10 where we'll just have a few words of wrap up um, for you know, bringing us all back together. I hope you all had some wonderful discussions during your small groups. I'm sorry there wasn't more time, but you know, we look forward to hosting more opportunities like this in the future. Um, again, if you had been in person, this would have been a really wonderful time to meet each other. And hopefully you've met some new credit unions you can then reach out to or people you heard on the panel. We're happy to make introductions. Um, at this time, I'm just gonna say a few closing remarks. I wanna thank the wonderful speakers for sharing their insights and strategies with us. We couldn't have done this session without you and we love how hard you're working and we just acknowledge that um, and all the things that you're doing for your community are making a huge difference. Um, we are going to head into lunch from 12.15 to 12.45, meaning you're welcome to log off, but we encourage you to come back at um, 12.45 because Jody Harris, the director of the CDFI fund, will be um, speaking on a plenary. Um, to talk about how credit unions have stepped up to be financial first responders during COVID. This session is gonna be closing at 12.15, uh, but you can go back to the conference homepage and log into the next session after you have a chance to have lunch. Um, and we look forward to seeing you back at our plenaries. But thank you again for all the speakers and all the attendees. Um, it was great um, seeing you and hearing you and uh, getting this chance to share about the unique um, experiences within Black communities. So have a Thank you. Bye.